Hi brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that you continue to experience the grace and peace of our God and that your hearts continue to rest in his goodness and in his great love for us. I was thinking about how in my job I deal an awful lot with people who talk about how they deserve things. And usually they mean something positive, like they deserve a fair hearing, or they deserve a lunch break, or something like that. But like we looked at last week, when you take a step back and you look at the way things are in the world and who we are and who God is, then you have to admit we really don't deserve a whole lot at all. We learned that sin entered the world and because of that, pretty much every traumatic and terrible thing that's happened has happened because of sin and God's anger against sin. And because we all sin, we all deserve God's wrath and his punishment against that sin, and God really doesn't owe us anything. And yet, we also learned that even in that, in the great scheme of God's plan to redeem his creation, we are counted worthy to have a way to come to God, where we can come and live with him forever, as he intended us to. We learned that the fall of mankind was not the end of the story, and that while God is a God of justice and a God of wrath, he is also a God of great mercy. And mercy is what happens when you deserve punishment, you deserve wrath, you deserve something bad to happen to you, but the one who can dish out the punishment decides to spare you and pardon you. And the Bible is just filled with examples of God putting his mercy on display. We think about Adam and Eve again. When Adam and Eve sinned and caused the downfall of the whole human race, God didn't blot them out, but instead made them the parents of all of mankind. When we think about Joseph and his brothers and how they sold him into slavery, where there could have been such destitution and lifelong worthlessness, he made them into the fathers of the 12 tribes. And we learn about how when the Israelites were enslaved in Babylon, fully deserving of the punishment for their sins, God still brought them home, brought them back to their promised land. And that's where I'd like you to turn. If you have a Bible, please go ahead and open it to the Old Testament, to the book of Nehemiah. And God's people Israel at this point had been in captivity in Babylon for many decades brought far across the desert to what we now call Iraq, all seemed hopeless. It looked like God's plan had gone off the rails completely, and yet God worked through pagan kings and through prophets to bring them comfort and to bring them assurance and ultimately to bring them back home. And the temple is rebuilt and life slowly starts to return to what the people knew as some kind of normality and God raised up guys like Nehemiah, whom the king of Persia sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild the city and to be its governor. So open chapter 9 of Nehemiah and we'll see that in the middle of all of this rebuilding and economic revival and all that sort of stuff, the focus is put on God and how great and merciful he is. So let's take a look, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6. You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve all of them. Verse 9. You saw the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heard their cry at the Red Sea. Verse 12. By a pillar of cloud you led them in the day and by a pillar of fire in the night to light for them the way in which they should go. Verse 15, you gave them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought water for them out of the rock for their thirst. Verse 17, you were a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and did not forsake them. Verse 19, you in your great mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. Verse 27, according to your great mercies, you gave them saviors who saved them from the hands of their enemies. 
Verse 28, when they turned and cried to you, you heard from heaven, and many times you delivered them according to your mercies. And verse 31, in your great mercies you did not make an end of them or forsake them, for you are a great and merciful God. What a roller coaster. God's people, Israel, were so neglectful, so unfaithful, so fickle and forgetful, but because of his mercy, God calls them back to himself again and again and again. He sustains them physically. He who made the heavens and the earth is he who gave them bread and water and safety and health and security and comfort because God is merciful. He pours out his undeserving favour, his great mercy, not because of how great and wonderful and perfect and faithful mankind is, but because of who he is. How merciful is God to hold out his hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way that is not good. How merciful is God that his heart yearns for those whom he chose. How merciful is God that this promise is not for the Jew only, but for all who would come to him. How merciful is God that both the righteous and the unrighteous alike enjoy things like peace, health, comfort and safety. How merciful is God that we deserve death, but through his son get new life. How merciful is God that he requires nothing of you to confess your sin only and to repent from your sins and to believe in his Son and you will be saved and have eternal life. There are many things we study in the Bible. Creation, the end times, election, the church, all that kind of stuff. But we have to study all of it and read every word of the Bible with these words in mind, this great, simple, yet profound truth that God is a merciful God. And I'm sure you're suffering right now. In fact, I know you are. In some way, you're not doing well. Life is not treating you well. Or whatever the case might be, something with your health. Or loneliness. Or unemployment. Or self-doubt or powerlessness, but friends, these things will last only for a time because God is a merciful God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the earth, that we should be holy and blameless before him. If your faith is in Christ, friends, then no matter what this world throws at you, no matter what happens with your health or your job or whatever else, whatever happens, you belong to him. He chose you. He saves you because God is a God of mercy. Let's pray.